It's time for the Daily Stand-Up Podcast presented by Agile Dad with your host, Lee Henson. Without any further ado, let's get started. I've had a lot of students ask me <clears throat> to put together a series uh, about things in life in the trenches. When you're ingrained in Agile and you're doing Agile and you're in the trenches, people are asking me to highlight some of the things that I've discovered along the way. And one of the things that, one of the comments that came up in one of my classes was super cool. Uh, a young lady in my class said, I love this class and I love the way it's going because the things you're teaching us are not what's in the book. It's not necessarily what the book says about Agile or what the book says about Scrum. You're telling us about things that actually happen and using real world examples. So she asked me if I'd ever considered doing a, a series on the podcast about Agile in the Trenches and talking about some some bigger issues and how they're really handled and what happens in the trenches. And I said, you know, that's not a bad idea. So I thought I'd give it a test run this week and see if I could pick some topics uh, that come up frequently and give you some perspective from the trenches. So let's start with one that uh, I, I get this one all the time. And this is coming from leadership where they say, we are struggling because our agile teams just don't hit their deadlines. They they're consistently late. They're not delivering things on time. So the heavy emphasis is being placed on deadlines and, and, and making things right. And I think that this is a symptom of a much bigger problem, right? Anyone who's taken my Scrum Master class will tell you that I always say the Scrum Master is like a doctor. And one of the things that the Scrum Master should always do, is, i.e. Agile Coach, uh, should be to listen for symptoms. And I really do believe this is a symptom. So instead of focusing on deadlines, I think if teams and organizations focused on demoing more frequently or delivering working product value to stakeholders more often, what's going to happen is, you know, in a sprint review, obviously you're going to show these things. But one of the things that I encourage my team to do is if you have something and you want to get a once over, you know, it's okay for you to walk over to somebody and say, hey, do you have a couple of seconds to take a look at this? I, I got this wrapped up. I just want to get your opinion. I just want, before we do a public demo, before we show it to everybody, I want to get your opinion. I want to see where you stand. And what I've discovered is when you do that, that you're going to get feedback more frequently and it's going to make your product evolution better. And it's going to allow you to get that faster feedback sooner so that you can make those pivots and adjustments as needed. Um. Also, in addition to that, while, while I'm on a topic, I'm just thinking about this. I, I think that too often we go to the wrong person. Let me explain what I mean by that. Instead of going directly to the end users and stakeholders and keeping them close to the team, we find that person who speaks on behalf of the stakeholders or you become the person who speaks on behalf of the team. One of the things that I've discovered is the main reasons organizations uh, are missing deadlines, you know, some of the critical reasons, is because one, they're not demoing often enough and showing people what's going on, and two, they have they have these proxy people in place who represent other people, but they're not the people that need to be spoken to. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, going in a different direction, but staying with the same topic, another reason why people fall over on deadlines or fail on deadlines is because they're trying too hard to plan too much up front. They do over planning. Now, confession, I might have a little bit to do with this. So let me explain what I mean by that. I think when I go into organizations, one of the big pitfalls that I see is that they do no upfront planning. They go straight to the product owner and say, bring me a backlog, right? And that doesn't work because with no upfront planning and with no research and with no understanding who your target audience is and creating a hypothesis, there's no way you're going to get a proper behavioral driven uh, product or service that people are going to enjoy using, right? So I think that you do require some upfront plan. However, what I found is the pendulum is starting to swing the other way. And instead of people going in and doing experiments and learning from those experiments and pivoting, they're trying to dot every I and cross every T and create that long-winded technical user requirements document. And that's causing organizations to fail in their path. It's causing them to have grief, right? So we need to make sure that we have some upfront ideation and discovery, but we want it to be based on experiments and, you know, hypothesis. We don't want it to be the full product or project plan completely created upfront. And that leads me to my next thought. 
So, so far, we need to make sure we're demoing and delivering more often. We're avoiding having people in the center who are trying to be mediators on our behalf. We're not over planning up front, all right, or, you know, trying to plan everything up front, I should say. Uh, but we need to make sure we approach the product or service we're trying to build with small incremental steps or iterative steps that provide value. And I think that this is interesting because I think too often we we do the experiment and we create these iterative pieces, but the iterative, pretty, the iterative piece that we built doesn't add value. So what ends up happening is uh, we, we just get an imposed deadline, which is really interesting, but the two are related. And I think it's important for you to, to think about how you're going to approach building the best product you can. Uh, next, it's it's one of these things that, you know, I talked about product discovery, but it's almost like picture yourself being an investigator. If you're a product owner, a lot of times it's said product owners like a lawyer, that they have private investigators who work for them to gather information and present them with that information. Picture for a minute that you're a product owner and that you do all this product discovery right? And you figure things out, but then you don't do anything with the evidence, right? You don't adjust or pivot when there's failure. You don't, it, it's just, it behooves me, but I see it often where sometimes the evidence is not what you want to achieve the winner, but the evidence is necessary in order for us to grow, in order for us to learn. There's a young lady in my class and she says, I don't believe in failure. She says, I believe fail means first attempt in learning. And I was like, hey, man, sister, that makes sense. So we need to use our discovery and the things that we learn in order to plan out future uh, adjustments and how we're going to pivot and how we're going to you know, make things happen. And we need to focus on refinement that makes sense, right? Uh, and I don't want it to be this, this drudgery, but we should spend an hour a week with the team, product owners and team, an hour a week. And what you're going to find is that if you optimize refinement, and get to the point where you can make accurate forecast and, and adjust to those pivots, it's going to make it a lot easier for you so that uh, the, the deadlines aren't going to be missed anymore, right? And, and if there are deadlines even, because sometimes organizations will lift the deadlines altogether if you're continuously building in quality and continuously, continuously delivering value. Okay. Whew. So, so far, recap. Demo or deliver often. Avoid having a middleman. Uh, Use uh, use strategy building things instead of planning everything up front. Take small steps and show iterative value. Use the evidence from product discovery to adjust and pivot during your delivery, right? Uh, optimize refinement. Okay. Uh, next, you want to bring teams and those that are requesting things together to co-create a plan for what's going to happen. Now, this can be quite expensive. So one of my thoughts here is that oftentimes, I'm going to break one of the other rules here, I do have someone who's a technical analyst, at least initially, who represents a proxy, to answer some of the basic questions and get us on the path. But then once we're on the path, it's important for us to bring the whole team in for a big room planning scenario, whether it's whether it's pie planning, big room planning, rapid release planning. We need to get those teams involved and get them in front of the people who are requesting the things so that we can see and plan based on their reality. We don't want to uh, go against the grain if we don't have to. We don't, want, we don't want to fight an uphill battle if it's not necessary, right? And I think the last one and probably the most important one of this entire list is that we need to bring all of the stakeholders, all the customers and the teams together and let them know that they're partners and that we're building a product or service together. And just like any partnership, if one of the partners is just not in line or disagrees or whatever the case may be, it could cause the whole thing to fall apart. So I think it's important for them to understand that this is a relationship. It's a partnership. And it's something that if we work together, we're going to get the greatest value. And I think if you try those things, that the deadlines will slowly but surely go away. And those are tips and tricks that I learned in the trenches that aren't necessarily in any book. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, if you have a topic you want us to cover, reach out to us. Learn more at AgileDad.com, where we'd love to talk about your topic. We're going to continue this week with more in the trenches episodes. And as always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.